Hey Gems, welcome back to my channel. It's Jade here and today I've got a little med school motivation just for you. So my first piece of advice is form good study habits. Don't think that you're going to study the exact same way that you did in undergraduate. That said, you do need to formulate a plan before classes begin. Watch YouTube, read a book, Look at someone's Instagram, look up med student blogs, slash blogs, whatever you need to do. If you're watching this video right now and you've already begun your first week of medical school, don't let the end of the week come and you haven't studied something outside of the classroom. Sit down right now. It could only take a couple of hours, formulate a plan and get going. So my basic template includes overview videos and then doing the corresponding flashcards. I then skim the lectures for factoids that don't line up or that aren't considered high yield that the professor actually wants me to know, make a few flashcards over those, study those, and then I'll start to do practice questions. And this is your bread and butter. I feel like, I honestly think I learned the most from practice questions. Like Anki, yes, helps me retain facts but if I'm doing a practice question and I didn't really understand a concept before, now I've done this practice question and I can see somewhere in that explanation will usually clear some things up for me. If that is my golden ticket, I hope that that works for you. It's okay if it doesn't, find something else. I personally don't attend lectures. Anytime someone in undergraduate asks me, my only advice to them is to go to class. I feel like you cannot fail in undergrad if you just go to class. Medical school, completely different. I personally found class to be a waste of time. It doesn't mean that you won't get something out of it. You shouldn't have to attend a professor's lecture more than three times to know whether or not they're helping you, whether or not you'll be attending in the future. My second piece of advice, make sure you get your at least six, seven hours of sleep in a night. You know your brain needs sleep to learn. Somebody's told you. Nobody has, I'm telling you. You're not going to connect the dots without sleep. You can stuff as much in your brain as you want, but you're not going to retain that information if you haven't had a restful night's sleep. Additionally with that, I think I should mention because people believe hey, medical students, we study 24 hours a day. Don't do that to yourself. Don't sit down and study like 10 hours straight and think you're going to retain all that information because you're not. You should be studying in three to four hour blocks taking a 10 to 15 minute break in between those hours and then after that block taking another two to three hour break before you rev back up into that study mode. My third little tip of advice is to meal prep. It's going to save you so much time, so much energy. You won't get grumpy out of nowhere. You won't get groggy out of nowhere. You won't feel defeated and like you can't study sooner than you should. <laughs> okay. If you've never been much of a cook, now it's time to start. I'm just kidding. But like, you can't cook and your parents don't send you meals. You don't want to eat out all the time. Go ahead and link up with a food delivery service or a meal prep service. I'll leave a few coupons down in the description box below for you guys. My fourth piece of advice is self-care. It's more of a goal early on, but you do need to find a good groove in taking care of yourself outside of your basic needs while you're in medical school. Medical school is very challenging mentally, emotionally, spiritually. <laughs> so right now, like it's week one, you're running off motivation, you're trying to prove to yourself, I can do this. And maybe to everybody else, you don't need to prove to everybody else. But that's what you're about right now. And that's cool. But that's gonna die down. As soon as you pass this first unit, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I can do this. The next unit and you'll be like, oh, can I do this? And then you'll pass that unit and you'll be like, oh my goodness, I made it through liver week, we're good. Then you get to MSK and you're like, hmm, are we though? Then you pass MSK and everybody says after that third unit, you know, you're good. And you don't need that prove it to myself mentality anymore. So now you, you start slacking a little bit, right? But if you've been taking care of yourself this whole time, if you've actually been in the gym, if you've actually been eating right, you don't have too many other things to worry about outside of school, you can still keep your focus in school. Initially, you're willing to make sacrifices and that's cool, but after a while they add up. So just make sure once you start to feel comfortable that you give yourself maybe a full day off, maybe two half days off, 
per week just to give yourself some time to be a human have feelings do fun things have conversations with people <laughs> and not be a study bot which is like 90% of your life at this point. So me personally, I made the mistake of studying chronologically versus studying by yield. So that would be my advice to you, study by yield, not by chronology, because you're never gonna get through every single lecture or every single PowerPoint. So don't stress yourself out about that. Going chronologically, that's what you're doing. You're stressing yourself out into thinking that you need to know everything, you need to touch on everything that's not true simply not you can't do it there's a reason why these get degrees in medical school okay so if you let that notion go now that you need to go over everything and you need to look at everything at least once or twice no really it's a blessing if I get to look over things that are important maybe three times in the beginning it's hard because you don't exactly know what's important but at least in my school we will hand you down a breakdown by subject that are tested on unit exams and I think that the rule of thumb is two questions per hour of lecture that you had right so Monday you had a three hour biology lecture expect six questions to come from that biology lecture you can do it so I mentioned weeks one and two are basically review the real work came week three we basically started all new materials by week three all of us had a breakdown <laughs> i guess it made by week three because week three was mine i saw people before then like looking like zombies because you go from this happy blissful moment everyone knows you're going to be a doctor you've done your white coat ceremony like everything's so real and then you get here and it's like am i gonna be a doctor <laughs> because this is hard <laughs> for me it wasn't exactly what i expected let me know in the comments down below how it was for you again i'm not saying any of this to scare you i'm just saying this so that you'll be more prepared than i was that said my fifth little piece of advice is to make plans that you can look forward to for after your first exam if it's gonna be small cool i would suggest something a little bigger i went back home which is nine hours away after my first exam and having that planned after I had my little mini breakdown week three and I call my friend I'm like oh my god what is going on and he's like okay well we'll get your tickets to come home and that was really good for me so whatever you want to plan to do that you'll look forward to keep your mind focused on that we also did do brunch margaritas right after our exam everybody looks loose we got having that thing to look forward to the same way your whole life, your whole academic career, what you've been looking forward to is if I could just be a doctor, right? Of course, that's a huge goal. So your stepping stone to that was, I should get into medical school. Well, you're here. What did you think about all the times when everything was so hard? I'm trying to get into medical school. I'm going to go to medical school. I'm going to be a medical student. Everything's going to be good. It's just like that. You've been looking forward to this, and now here you are. So look forward to that, and you'll be <laughs> one unit down, okay? Every exam plan to do something that you can look forward to doing because it will get you through <laughs> and so my last little piece of advice if something that you're doing study wise isn't working for you change it up if you're actually actively studying and you're not getting that material down you're constantly missing like the same questions over it switch it up do something else don't be afraid to shake the boat a little bit because I was, I went in thinking I was going to do the exact same thing that I was doing for undergrad. But yeah, that did not work for me. Outlining ended up being like 30 pages per week. I'm never going to be able to complete that outline and then convince myself to sit there and read 30 pages without falling asleep or rewrite 30 pages. Can't do it. Anki is my outline. Hit the space bar. Next. You only put pertinent information. And I've gone through that outline as many times as I need to know the knowledge. But again, don't worry if you have to switch things up. You will eventually find what works for you. And although the material will still get more challenging as you go on, you will definitely gain the skills that you need to digest that material more easily. And your brain will definitely adjust. You will be just blown away by how much your brain learns to process. So I'm wishing you all well on your journey. God bless.